Hey guys, it's Silver Snorlax, and I am back today to take a look at an experiment that I've been running for the past six months or so. I haven't uploaded it to my YouTube channel, but I have it right up on E4. Please take a look at that. It'll be in the description. Just follow that link. and It'll have all the kind of test and test parameters I have set up. So essentially what I've been doing over the past six months or so is running UV light spectrum testing and seeing how it affects PSA slabs and raw cards and just Pokemon cards in general. Uh, the objective of that is to see what kind of fading you can expect uh, with direct sunlight or with more common interior lighting, uh, see how that's affected, and to find ways to protect cards. Uh, maybe there is a very cheap cost-effective option, maybe you have to go with a more expensive one. Uh, that's kind of what my experiment is aimed to do. So I have two groups running currently. One is in a more controlled environment that's under a light 24-7. Uh, it's in a dark closet with just one light. Uh, we won't be looking at that today, uh, but we will be looking at the other group that I have that is exposed to direct sunlight. So bear with me here. I'm going to move, move us over, and you'll have to pardon my angle here. There's not a perfect science to this. You'll notice there's an extreme glare you can see. Uh, there's, you know, like a storage shed and stuff. My neighbor's short storage shed uh, in the background. So unfortunately, to try and reduce glare, I'm coming in at an angle as best I can. Uh, but these are the cards that I've had sitting up here for a while. So basically, these cards, their objective was to sit in sunlight uh, and get exposed to, you know, whatever was available uh, on my back patio here. The way the sun rises, it rises. Actually, I can show you. If we turn around here in my backyard, it, it kind of rises in this general direction, kind of comes up and over and it gets exposed, you know, it, it's not a perfect plane, you know, fortunately I do live in a suburban neighborhood with houses and trees and foliage and everything else, uh, so you won't get the sun as soon as it hits the horizon, but you will get some, some light. Uh, and that's about as best as I could do in order to really uh, kind of get a full experience with the sun. So roughly these cards are getting, I would like to say somewhere between four, four to eight hours worth of direct sun daily. Um, additionally, I've been running this experiment since October 1st of last year. And our UV index for the Pittsburgh region, Pittsburgh winters, cloudy, snowy, uh, rainy, uh, UV index for us is about one to two. It's not very high. So while I am getting sunlight, I'm not getting a lot of direct sunlight. There's a lot of cloud coverage. So just keep that in mind as we look at the experiment and what we've done so far. But we'll come back in at our angle here and we can take a look. Um, but basically, we're, this is the results that I've, I'm uh, seeing so far. Now you'll notice all the cards are covered with a painter's tape. That is done on purpose. The objective being uh, after I've uh, run the experiment to my satisfaction, I will remove that painter's tape and we can get a 50-50 look at each and every one of the cards. However, there are visible differences, uh, even without you know looking at the other side of the card that we can kind of look at and to have some takeaways from at the six month mark. So let's, let's start with this top row here. Uh, this top row consists of an Ultra Pro One Touch, a standard raw card, no protection, and a PSA slab that is protected with a piece of UV resistant acrylic. I believe that's 98% uh, UV resistant. So the amount of change that I'm seeing with this top row is actually pretty minimal. Um, theoretically, the one touch and the acrylic are supposed to have the highest degree of UV protection. Uh, for the one touch, I'm not sure what that is exactly, but um, this was, uh, again, 98%. Uh, the raw card kind of gives us a pretty good control. You can see on the uh, control card where the um, border is, that yellow border, how very, very light that is. Now compare that to the other side here. See how dark that is compared to how light that is. Now the actual blue on the card itself doesn't seem to have, you know, that blue background doesn't really seem to have too much of an effect. Not a whole lot of fading. However, I think that'll be more apparent in a couple months when we have some summer light. We have more uh, UV light hitting these cards directly. Maybe we'll see some fading then. But that's kind of the general top row there is just not a whole lot of change. This is the uh, acrylic here has done phenomenal. I'm, I'm using a slightly different card. Obviously, I'm using a Charizard, uh, Japanese Charizard from Dragonstorm. There we go. Um, and not seeing significant fading with that, and that's good um, because I'm really hoping that acrylic does what it is supposed to do. But we're going to move down here to some of the other test subjects that I have, and we'll talk about them. Here's a standard PSA card. There's nothing special that was added to this. Um, it was just exposed to direct sunlight. Again, you can see with the border, it's a very light border. And unfortunately, I don't have that tape removed yet to give you the 50-50 that I want, but we will be looking at that in a couple of months. Um, but this has been um, 
the blue has been slightly faded a little bit around the card. It's not um, as pronounced as it once was, and that's pretty apparent. Moving down here, this one I'm actually a little bit disappointed with as far as to what I'm seeing currently. Uh, this card was protected in something called Jet Seal. It's an automotive chemical. It's produced by a company called Chemical Guys. And what their claim is with Jet Seal is that it has UVA and UVB inhibitors. Granted, it's made to be used for automotive uses. However, I, would, I was hoping that you could do uh, the same thing with card. Theoretically, you know, you could still block some of the UV light that would that would hit it. Um, but from what I'm seeing currently, while the border is still pretty sharp, the card itself is green and has um, has started to fade away. Um, it's still pretty early, and granted, it's a different color scheme. I did lots of different colors on purpose to kind of see how each color reacted. Um, but the green there is starting to go away, and it's not as good as I was hoping it would be. Moving on, this is just a standard booster pack with no additional protection. Uh, there is, in fact, fading that we can see. Uh, it's pretty light, getting lighter, uh, but that was one of the ones that I noticed over the past couple of months that was seem to be fading fairly quick. This one I just put in a card saver one, just a standard reverse Zapdos. I did want to see how reverse cards would do in direct sunlight. Um, card saver one is one of the most common protective methods that we use in the hobby currently and the interior sleeve is no big deal. So, um, so what I'm seeing currently is just a little bit of fading from the yellow hollow foil and uh, not so much, a little bit around the edges actually I should say. There is a little bit that we can see here, um, but that is starting to go. Moving down here, here's another unprotected slab. I did a couple of slabs that um, were just unprotected just to see how they would do. A little Carvana from Team Magma. Um, Again, we're seeing the standard fading. It's in a slightly different location on the window. Uh, wasn't quite sure, you know, with with you know three rows, how how much sunlight each row was going to get. But it looks to be about the same from this row. Uh, moving down here, we did a different card type, just another Japanese promo. We are in fact seeing some fading here. It's yellow, uh, so not as strong as I would like it to be. But there's definitely fading there, and I believe that was placed just on a standard plastic sleeve. There's nothing special there, just a standard plastic sleeve. And that plastic sleeve doesn't seem to be slowing down any of the sunlight that's passing through onto the card. And then this last one um, is interesting. I'm a Topps collector and somebody was nice enough to give me a slab to test. And uh, the Topps series card I noticed faded faster than anything. Uh, within two months, I noticed significant fading and by month three, it was pretty shot. It's about the condition it is now. And to kind of give you an example here, I have another card. This one's a hollow foil to be fair. But if you focus on the Venusaur itself, not necessarily the background, you can see the differences in the color and it is rather significant. So uh, what I'm hoping to do is in a couple of months come August, I would really like to um, take these down, do a quick review, and then maybe even bring them to Worlds. So those of you going to DC in a couple of months, let me know. Uh, I'll be happy to show you at the venue exactly what I've discovered with my uh, experiment here. And hopefully I'll have more uploads on the channel and on E4. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. I appreciate it. More uploads to come.